What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video we will be talking about the 2022 NBA Draft for the first time with a board or watch list that's out too early to be really definitive, but I think it's necessary regardless. A few things about this class before we jump all the way in. I don't think there's currently a prospect that's on the level of the K, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley trio, but there are still a lot of unique talents, especially in the front court and on the wing. As usual, this early board is dominated by freshmen, but there are still many deserving upperclassmen and multi-year players that'll work their way into the first round and higher than you initially expect. That's just the name of the game. For this class, I had to do a little bit more research than usual, given the state of the world and its effects on the youth game in the last year plus. And on top of that, I just didn't have the time to follow some of the middle to late tier guys in this class as much as in the past, but I'm getting closer. To start it off, here are a few that we won't talk about too long today, but are worth a mention. I think Javon Quinterly is in for a big year at Alabama. He's one of the most creative guards out there. Caleb Love may be in for a bounce back year at UNC. Mark Williams at Duke had some really encouraging moments as a big in his young career. And Baylor freshman Kendall Brown could be in that mix with that athleticism and defensive potential. And there are many, many more who could be mentioned here. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into the first player. Marcus Bagley had an up and down season at Arizona State, ultimately ended by injuries. He went through some of the NBA draft process and probably would have been a mid second round pick, though he had some people in the media who still liked him in the late first. If he can stay healthy this year and show a bit more of that elite shooting and size on the wing in a likely bigger role, he should still garner some first round attention. You may know Mike Miles from being a baller's life star when he was 10, or heard the stories of he and Cade growing up together. But there's a good chance we all start knowing him as a future college basketball star himself. I liked him coming into TCU. He was a bit inconsistent but had a solid freshman year there, putting up about 14 points and 3 assists, going toe to toe with Baylor, West Virginia, and OSU. But he built on that and looked great with Team USA this summer. He's a very talented ball handler and shot creator, and we'll see how far he can take his game. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeremy Sohan flies up boards throughout the year at Baylor. He's got some of the best defensive capabilities in this class at 6'8", 220. He's a really good athlete and has had some wildly intriguing moments on offense for a guy his size. He's still raw, but someone I'm fine with putting here for now. Alan Flanagan made ridiculous improvements from year one to year two at Auburn, like across the board. He's a super athletic lefty wing who doesn't lack confidence, and I think he could be in for a big year three and propel himself into the first round. Terrence Shannon Jr. had major first round buzz this year, but decided to return to Texas Tech, even with the coaching change. I feel like he probably should have left just given where his stock was at, but with the presumed bigger role, he should be able to prove he belongs, and especially showing his improvements as a shooter and in other areas, ultimately adding to his lefty slashing and defending game. Hunter Silas is a long athletic combo creator out of Omaha, Nebraska, now headed to Gonzaga. There's a lot of talent in this Gonzaga backcourt, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays another year in college, but I think he's a pro at some point, and more than anything, I'm just a fan of his game. This is definitely a preliminary ranking for him, but he'll have to show and prove you know, throughout the year. Michigan State's Max Christie can be a pro. Whether that's this year or next year, I think he has a great chance of getting his name called. He's a 6'6'2 guard who I think can be a lights out shooter and score from the mid range. He might be a little bit behind physically, but he's got a good baseline skill set. Earl Timberlake was on my radar as a borderline first round pick last year before playing just 7 games in his freshman campaign at Miami. He's transferred to a talented Memphis squad to play for Coach Penny, and I think he's in a good situation to potentially break out. He's a big physical guard or wing who can really fill up the stat sheet. I really like what he does as a playmaker and defensively. Health willing, he should be in the conversation. Just months after having Isaiah Jackson, Coach Cal gets Damian Collins, another super athletic big man who blocks shots with the best of them. He's got a ridiculous wingspan, he's explosive and has great timing, though he's still pretty raw everywhere else. There's lots to like with him as a prospect, he can put it on the floor, has some guard skills, but we'll see what he does at the next level. Julian Champagny was pretty locked in as an early second round pick for me this year before deciding to return to St. John's for another season. He can get buckets with the best of them, and to me he's just a solid season away from being drafted. I wouldn't be surprised if he climbs a little bit higher. Though he is a junior, he won't turn 21 until after draft day. 
Nolan Hickman has the potential to be one of the better guards in this class. He was originally committed to Kentucky, but is going to Gonzaga. Nothing about his game will really wow you, but he's really solid across the board and affects the game in a variety of ways. He's 6'2", unselfish, composed, and has demonstrated the ability to control games. Iowa's been headlined by Luka Garza for the last several years, one of the most dominant figures in the college basketball game, and Joe Wieskamp took whatever attention Garza didn't get. But last year, freshman Keegan Murray showed some things, especially defensively, that were super compelling. He has a ways to go offensively, but the pathway is there for him to become a first round pick as this 3 and D sort of wing. Kadari Richmond has transferred to Seton Hall after his freshman year at Syracuse. I didn't watch a ton of Syracuse games last year, but the ones I did, it always seemed like Kadari made a difference in his limited minutes and could be in for an explosion with more room. He's a shifty guard with a bag full of moves and has some serious tenacity on defense. While he may not be super popular right now, I think he has a good chance to separate himself this year. Jabari Walker came on strong down the stretch of his freshman season at Colorado. He's a rangy forward whose calling card is on the defensive end first, but has clear perimeter skills that he should be taken to the next level. He happens to be the son of former NBA player Samaki Walker and is one of the top returners in college basketball this season. If he's developed in the way I think he can, he has definite first round potential. Dyson Daniels is a physically imposing combo guard who was headed to play with the Ignite. The 6'6", 18-year-old made some waves in the U19s weeks ago, and I'm interested to see his development going forward. He's got a well-rounded game that's reminiscent of a more fluid and further offensively developed Jaden Springer at times, but I'll say part of it might just be the hair and the lumber 11. Florida State has a wild track record of developing NBA talent, especially on the wings. And Matt Cleveland has a chance to join the crew as a raw athletic wing who should be an immediate presence defensively while he continues to grow and develop offensively. JD Davidson is one of the most ridiculous athletes in the class. He's high energy and will try to dunk on you at any and every given moment. The 6'2 guard out of Alabama is one of the top ranked recruits, but I'm curious to see his full game in college. He was Mr. Highlight for the last two years, especially against some of his school competition, but I want to see him continue to improve as a shooter and as a passer, but he does have a great ceiling. Usman Zhang has an intriguing skill set as a young 6'9 wing. He's headed to play in the NBL next season, and we should get a better look at him on a level that's been proven to produce NBA caliber young players in the last several seasons. He's still pretty raw, but his combination of size, athleticism, and scoring potential are enough to at least have him high on the watch list next year. Ben Matherin is another guy I talked about quite a bit this year. I thought he'd leave Arizona for the NBA draft, but he opted to go back for another year. He's got some real expectations this year after showing off his athleticism, shooting ability, and just overall two-way potential. He's got to have an emphasis on improving with the ball in his hands and making better decisions. Kennedy Chandler has been one of the best guards in his high school class for a while now. The former Mo Cannon Sunrise Christian standout has steadily improved over the last several years, and heading to Tennessee, he should make noise as a potential top 20 prospect. He's only 6'1", but his ability to create advantages off the bounce, make plays for others, and with his outside shooting improvements, it should make him one of the better guards in this NBA draft class. Overtime elites, Gene Montero, one of the few lead guards I think we could see in the lottery. Montero is from the Dominican Republic, really impressed in the U16s in 2019, and eventually went on to go play with Gran Canaria's B squad and making some limited appearances with the senior team. He's about 6'3", can get just about anywhere on the court with his shiftiness and craftiness, and though the shot is a work in progress, if he can improve there, he should get easy top 20 looks. And he'll likely be the first major prospect for the overtime elite program, so we'll see how that all works out. It's obviously very early, but I'm a big Ty Ty Washington fan. Nicknamed the Phoenix Sun, Ty Ty is a 6'3 guard with an evident 6'9 wingspan headed to Kentucky. I think he's got a good chance to establish himself as one of the better guards in this draft with his ability to shoot it, create offense for himself and others, and with his touch. While no, it isn't a typo for the 2021 NBA MVP, he does happen to be the next best thing out of Serbia. 
Nikola Jovic has serious skills at 6'10", and they were on full display during the FIBA U19 games weeks ago. From the playmaking to the perimeter shooting potential, you have to be intrigued, though there are some athletic limitations there and some other things like getting downhill that I'll be watching. You guys are probably already familiar with Roko Pukacin if you watched any of my boards or mock drafts from last year. He took his name out of the 2021 draft at the last minute, and while many were upset with the decision, I, I kinda liked it. I think he makes a legitimate run at being a lottery pick given his versatility and high upside. He's still younger than a lot of these prospects so I think he'll end up the winner in the end given he was probably going to be a second round pick in this year's draft. Yannick Souza is a super raw athletic big man from Congo. He's tremendous in transition, has good footwork as a role man and covers a ton of ground defensively. Again he is very raw. But he's still just 17, he's been playing the game for about 4 years, and I'm a big fan of his skill set and tools. He's definitely one to watch in the top part of this draft. Jaden Ivey blossomed into one of the better players in college basketball for Purdue last season and carried that into the FIBA U19 championships where he was terrific. At about 6'4", Ivey is a ridiculous athlete who plays with a ton of energy and excels defensively. The shot will be the thing to watch with him for his draft stock, but to me, all signs are pointing towards him becoming a lottery pick next season. Memphis's Jalen Duran has been a man amongst boys pretty much since birth. He is the embodiment of Reggie from Bad Boys 2. How old are you? I'm 15, Mr. Manhattan. Mother you look 30. And believe it or not, he was actually in the class of 2022 earlier this month before heading to play for Coach Penny at Memphis. He's an agile big with good energy, touch, and defensive ability. He's not super dynamic from the perimeter or anything like that, but he's a solid playmaker, and I'm excited to watch him with the Tigers this season. You might recognize Caleb Houston from Montverde, where he was a big time player and teammate to guys like Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham, etc. While he knocked down threes at a great rate throughout high school, he struggled a little bit the last time we saw him in the FIBA U19 games playing for Canada, but I'm confident he turns that around en route to being another possible lottery pick for Jawan Howard in the Wolverines. Jabari Smith is that modern foreman that blocks shots and also does damage from the outside. The 6'10 McDonald's All-American is headed to Auburn. I'm a big fan of his agility and his development in recent years to this potential lottery pick. He's yet another guy to watch for in the SEC this year. Long Beach's finest Peyton Watson burst onto the scene while in high school, becoming one of the best young wings in the country. He also ran with the USA U19 team, and though the minutes weren't super consistent, he showed great defensive potential that really intrigued me on top of a raw scoring ability that he's always shown. I really like his potential, and I'm interested to see his role on what should be a great UCLA team. Duke's AJ Griffin comes in at number 5. He's a big physical wing who has some unfortunate injuries during his senior year, but he remains a guy who has a great chance of landing in the lottery and possibly competing for the number one pick. AJ's a good scorer who took and made a ton of tough shots, and I love his defensive potential. Patrick Baldwin Jr. was a top five recruit with offers from pretty much every blue blood, and he decided to stay home and go play for his dad at the University of Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the horizon. He's a talented sharpshooting wing at 6'9 with high overall upside and I'm excited to see what he does this year. He's taking an unconventional route which is always refreshing and I'd say he's at least currently in the convo to go top 3. Right now I have Jaden Hardy number 3. Hardy is a 6'4 2 guard headed to play in the G League Ignite program. I can confidently say he's one of the most talented shot makers I've seen in high school in the last several years. He doesn't have the Anthony Edwards, Jalen Green type of explosion, but he's absolutely wired to score and he shoots it with the best of them. The footwork and balance are tremendous, and while you'll currently find a decent range in his ranking from about 3 to 15, I think he'll eventually improve as a playmaker and make better enough decisions in the G League program to warrant top 5 consideration most of the year. Now down to the top 2, we have Chet Holmgren at the second spot. You're getting no argument out of me if you say Chet is number one at this point in time. He's unbelievably fluid and agile at 7 foot, is a tremendous shot blocker and has guard skills that you don't often see from a guy that size. He's got a very unique skill set but I still have some reservations about him physically. He's listed at 190 which is pretty wild considering that's what Jaden Hardy weighs. But the talent is definitely there across the board. He should be a fun watch at Gonzaga. 
And at number one, we have Paulo Banchero out of Duke. Paulo is about 6'10", 6'11", about 250 pounds and is an overall physical freak. He's got a good all-around skill set for a guy at that size and the fourth spot. He makes plays for others and can defend several positions. He takes the number one spot for now as the most physically ready NBA guy, even though there are still some things I think he can and should improve going forward to maximize his skills. And I'm sure we see that during Coach K's last hurrah season. That's going to do it for this early board that should really just be called sort of a watch list at this point in the year, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I remember last year we did a video like this, and there were several players who just didn't pan out in the way I thought, or it was just simply too early. There's no reason to take this for any more than just a rough outline. That'll change a lot over time. I appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below some players that you liked that I mentioned, and some that I left out. I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and I'm out. Seven like the Papa House. Three cell phones, still nothing to talk about. Might pull your girl with a head knot. I used to off white like eggnog.